Last time on Spanner Addicts, Dave rocked up in a £30 micro and convinced us to transform it. On a budget of £57.20, we're taking it from this to this. Dave's been trying to convince us that the J11 Micra is the spiritual successor to the classic Mini, in that it's cheap to buy and run, is fun to drive, and could be modified and individualised on a doll money budget. The car was rank when he dragged it into the workshop but a bit of elbow grease has completely resurrected the paint. It's either a true miracle, or there's a bit of quality there. Or we're really great at something. I reckon it's the second one. So it looks nice and shiny and white, but it also looks like it's on stilts. If it was a Mini, we'd be shoving a set of high lows onto it. If we had a budget, which we don't, and this wasn't a 30 quid hedge find, we'd be ordering up a set of coilovers. But this is Spanner Addicts, and for the sake of Dave's little experiment, we're going to whip the standard front struts and springs out and do some special modifications, probably with an angle grinder. Removing the suspension components is pretty easy with a decent toolkit, spanners and a socket set. If you're jacking a car up, do it carefully and make sure it's properly supported on decent stands on a flat, hard surface before you start work. Old bricks, spare wheels and bits of wood do not constitute axle stands. If a car falls on you, it will break you, so don't take any risks. Fifteen minutes after Simon's left the building in a huff because David dared to suggest cutting the springs, which we would never ever do. All four wheels off, cars up on stands, um, we've got front suspension off, the first and struts, two bolts at the top, two bolts at the bottom, one clip for a brake hose, they're off. And the back springs are out as well, and they come out from just loosening the uh, bottom mount on the shock absorber and uh, a little bit of persuasion, and they'll come out and uh, we're ready now to proceed. This car really does stink. Um, and the reason is, there's actually mould in here, that's what's going to cause the smell. The great thing about the interlaid to car and the fabrics in them, they're really hard wearing. So you can use any of these sort of um, interior valet things and you just spray it on. Leave it for 30 seconds. It lifts the dirt out of the fabric. Uh, you wipe it off with a damp cloth and then when it's dry you just give it a vac over and they come up. They come up all right, so hopefully, just a quick operation like this means you don't have a smelly car. Zang. I have no intention of spending a long time under here, but basically it's as scruffy as the rest of the car. So we got Gans orange paint, I'm just going to chuck some on there, see what it looks like. This alloy cam cover is very corroded as well as filthy. It's one removed cam cover. Pretty difficult, but got off in the end. It needed degreasing properly, so instead Dave rubbed it with a bit of thinners and an old rag. And then we both had to go at it with wire brushes, wire wool and a bit of sandpaper. All nice gritty stuff which is going to trash your engine if you leave even a trace of it behind. Getting the cover media blasted would have given a better result, but we're too tight to cough up for that. Here we see the experienced body man preparing the micro for an invisible paint repair. Oh no, sorry it's Dave. He's doing his thing with old newspapers, a piece of wet and dry he found on the bench and a rattle can and an indeterminate shade of white that we bought for something else and couldn't be bothered to use. It sort of matches well, it's white. Dave decides to repair a nasty gouge in the rear arch. A quick rub down and then load it up with paint. Who needs filler? I've rubbed the steels down, I'm just masking them up. 
getting ready to put some paint on. Next time on Spanner Addicts, Des paints everything in the workshop orange and the micro rolls out of the shed and runs for at least 10 minutes.